Now the second half is Kevin Pesumino. Kevin is an interdisciplinary artist working in the live performance of digital media and social art practices. He is currently affiliated with Antics Community Arts as a community arts facilitator, where he works with marginalized youth in the greater forest lawn and engages them to make positive social change in their communities while using the arts. Please welcome Kevin. Hi, everybody. Wow. You look really sexy, everybody. Just say Hi. Um, what, a, what a great lineup. Wow. I'm like so inspired. Um, but okay. Okay, on to me. Here we go. Uh, um, we're ready. Well, oh, here we go. So, this is my house in Edmonton, Alberta. Uh, I grew up there. My parents are lower middle class Portuguese immigrants. My mother, a tailor seamstress. My father, a construction worker. Both humble incomes, but as a child, I just assumed we had a normal level of income compared to the many kids I went to school with. My younger years were filled with Portuguese culture. <laughs> I'm somewhere in there. Extra curricular Portuguese school for seven and a half years, Portuguese cultural dancing for 15 years, and a lot of Portuguese immigrant uh, parties. All these were the beginnings of my learning of impor and import the importance of community. I went to elementary school uh, in the northeast in northeast Edmonton. My classroom had kids from all different cultures, income brackets. Some with one parent, some with two parents, some with none. Some valued, or someone could speak English. Some shopped at Value Village before Value Village became trendy. Um, it definitely was a school not deemed privileged. And I'm I'm the one beside the teacher though. Look at me, I'm so proud. <laughs> Twelve years later, I graduate and I decide that I want to pursue a career in the performing arts. Uh, I also realized that I'm attracted to men. Yeah. I'm essentially performing what I'm told through the media is what a man is supposed to act like. All the while I'm feeling like I'm less of a man because I just can't meet those expectations. When I graduate from post-secondary, I pack my bags and I went to teach English in rural Thailand. My world was turned upside down, quite literally. With, with less, these communities in this remote part of Thailand found ways to innovate medicine, <clears throat> create community, abundance around, uh, around tradition and sports, food and art. I moved back after four years, four years in Thailand, to pursue more training in the performing arts. This is when things began to shift for me as a performance maker. I began to consider what the audience meant to me. Instead of having them in front of me, my perception shifted to with me like a temporary village where, where we each have something to contribute. I saw the role of the performer as someone who could engage people, provide a space for inclusion, creativity, and transformation. But nobody when going to theater likes to be singled out and brought up on stage. I was interested, I was interested in the public, but making work in high art institutions. In 2013, I moved to Calgary. I thought it was a calculated decision, to move to the center of oil and gas, where there was abundance at the time and where I could find myself a good job and pay off my student loans. This is when I was introduced to an organization called Antics Community Arts. I began working at Antics Community Arts on my birthday in 2014, and what a gift. I remember telling my boss over the hiring phone call that he was changing my life, and coincidentally, that's Antics' mission statement. Antics works with marginalized youth to engage them with their community to make positive social change while using the arts. These kids I work with might not seem like they do, but they do feel like they're less. Less than male, less than heterosexual, less than middle class, less than Canadian, less than able to speak English, less than the cool kids who outcast them for whatever reasons. At Antics, we make kids feel like they belong somewhere and that their talents can create real change such as hashtag safe AB campaign. It, who's heard of that? <laughs> yes! In the midst of the legislative battling over whether students should be allowed to start their own gay straight alliances in their schools, I worked directly with high school students from Forest Lawn High School to ask them what having a GSA is about and why it's important and how does it change the school environment. The youth scripted all their comments, we taught them a few filmmaking techniques and after five months, they coordinated the filming of a public service announcement that was all created by them and included over 30 school staff 
school staff, administrators, community leaders, activists, members of faith organizations, artists, who believe that having a GSA in a school isn't just about providing a safe space for LGBTQ youth. It's about how we change the way that we all treat each other all over this province. In the weekend, the video launched online and it garnered over 6,000 views. The voice of the youth was the most important in this entire discussion, not some heterosexual politicians in Edmonton. <laughs> The Acadian Place Welcome Walls Project. The people who lived in this sixth floor of apartment complex managed by Calgary Homeless Foundation were a mixture of low income residents transitioning from homelessness or poverty to oftentimes their first roof over their heads. The youth who lived in this apartment building definitely had less, less of a chance to succeed because of their parents' income, less food on their table, less opportunity than most of us in this room. Over a period of 10 weeks, we engaged the youth in designing a mural for the entry foyer of their building. The youth compared the building they lived in as like a prison, not fun for kids, unsafe, not colorful. So in the design of the mural, where, where there was a prison, we drew, they drew outdoors. Where there was a lack of fun, there was wild abandon. Where, the, where there was unsafeness, there was metaphors of community vigilance. The whole community came out to paint and celebrate the youth's, the youth's vision. It gave people pride in their home. It made kids feel like they did something to change not only the environment, but the atmosphere that the adults lived in. We asked a group of new Canadian immigrant youth, what barriers and supports do you have in attaining educational success? The answers vary from curriculum that meets the needs of the students to quantifying grades. They are now creating animations with these answers, and their work will be showcased before school administrators in hopes that their voices and create real change in our educational system. I also coordinate the Greater Forest Lawn Youth Arts Action Committee. To date, the youth have transformed a four-horse trailer into a giant mobile play sculpture. They have designed non-English based signage for local park development, and they are currently working with local artist Caitlin Brown to design a sound installation that seeks to break down barriers between strangers in Greater Forest Lawn. And these are just some examples of how the youth work with ethics, community arts, are not only finding a sense of belonging to our programming, but contribute to the impact that they have on their community. Art can be a powerful vehicle for change. It's not just ballets and Shakespeare's or Rembrandt's. It's what's happening right now. Pachaka Cha was some person thinking up ways that public could inspire public. In a day and age when there are less jobs and less, less money, we need to seek out different capital that can provide change and innovation, not just for the middle and upper class, but also to include the voices of those who are by no choice of their own, marginalized. Our social capital will give voice to people that are never allowed at the brainstorming table. Our creative capital will use those diverse voices to innovate and transform how we all work together heading into the future. To go from less money to more people and ideas. Thank you.